Hi everyone, Lisa here from Fireside Strategic. Welcome to our video cast, Humanity Builds Better Businesses, where we celebrate leaders that do transformational work within organizations, helping their clients grow and lead teams with humanity. Right now, I'm very happy to chat with Jamie Martin, Life and Leadership Coach. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me today. I'm excited to talk and, and get to know you and everybody else better. So somewhere that I'd really like to start is your background. You have a very unique background that led you to coaching. And I think that for our audience, that would just provide some amazing context. Yeah, definitely. So um, I trained in college as an engineer. Um, I've always loved math and science. And I mean, one of those people who like used to go up an escalator and try to be like, wow, how does that work? Even when I was like, you know, 10, I was like, how does that thing work? And I, I looked at the gears. Um, so engineering was kind of a natural place for me to land in terms of education. But when I was going to Michigan, I really got um, exposed to a lot of leadership work. And that really ignited something completely different in me. And I was like, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm going to keep an eye out on that piece of things. Um, but of course, as a lot of 20 somethings do after college, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try the software business. Um, and so I, I did software development for about two years before I moved into product management. Um, and so I spent a lot of my career in product management, a little bit of it in client um, facing roles because I, I really find that great product managers have always have been client facing in some form or fashion, just because they know how to talk to a client, they understand the troubles the client faces. And so it's it's good to kind of bounce back and forth between those two roles um, so that you, you kind of retouch base with, oh, clients, those are the people that really consume my product, right? And so let's get in front of their struggles. Um, but as I was growing through my tech back, my tech career, I kept finding myself drawn to leadership and drawn to coaching. Um, I ended up, you know, managing teams for about eight years. And the thing that I loved the most was not managing them, but actually coaching them. And I still love one of my, one of the guys I, I um, had on my team, he came into my office one day and he's like, just tell me the answer. I'm going to ask you a question and I just want you to tell me the answer. And I said, you know, that's not how this works, <laughs> you know? And he was like, come on, just this once. It's like, you know, it's not how it works. Um, and I actually talked to him about a year ago and he said, you won't believe what I've just done. I did the same thing to, to that you used to do to me to somebody and it was great. He was like, I learned so much from that, you know, that push of not just giving me the answer. Um, and from that, that's really when I started realizing how much I love that element of my job more than everything else. And that's really what led me to coaching because if you audience, if you know anything about product management and quite frankly, anything in corporate, typically, even if you're a manager, you're spending most of your day doing things that are not directly related to managing your team or coaching your team or leading your team. A lot of it has to do with your colleagues and your work with your colleagues. And, um, and that's when I realized it's like, you know, I really want to get into coaching because I want to make bigger changes for people than the hour a week I get with my team, if that. So, yeah. I love that story. It's not common that you have somebody in the coaching space that has this engineering background. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm also a fellow kind of math nerd. And yeah. I really am interested in your perspective on how the disciplines of engineering and understanding how things work, of being that person that wants to know why does the escalator do what it does? How does that work? How does that tie in with the way that you analyze the way that people work? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's, it's, it's fascinating because a lot of people wouldn't think that product management and the engineering side of things actually relates to coaching, right? They'd be like, how does that, how does that come together? But fundamentally, you're asking questions right? Fundamentally, you have to be asking the question of like, huh, well, well, what's going on there, right? What, what's happening with that situation and have a curiosity about it. Um, if you think about the sciences, science, we always think is such a hard thing, right? It's, it's one of those things that there's a truth to it. 
But really when it comes to scientific method, it's all about theory and it's all about curiosity and it's about exploring. Engineering is the same way, it's about exploring. Um, that's one thing that I learned a lot about in my education was that there was no one path to an answer. It was, you could take multiple different paths and still get to the answer that they expected on the test, right? Because it was, you were being tested, but you could take a lot of different paths to get there. And that really taught me that the same thing with coaching is that, huh, well, I don't know where we're ending. We have a general sense in coaching where we want to go, um, but the path we take is all about curiosity and really delving in with the, my clients of saying, well, why is that? What's, what's going on there? Or what's really driving your desire to do this thing, whatever that thing is, or what's stopping you from moving forward and just getting really curious with them as to why or how, or, you know, what's really that root for them. It's the same thing with product management. That's so awesome. I love how you're pretty much applying the scientific method to the human experience. And that's what's allowing yeah. you to really look underneath the surface. Yeah, definitely. And you veer, which is great because it's one of those where, you know, scientific method, you kind of start learning something. You're like, oh, well, that, that's not what we expected. So now we got to veer this way, right? Kind of, you know, with everything that's going on in our world today, we're doing the same thing with like the Johnson and Johnson shot. You know, they're like, whoa, we got to pull back. Let's learn something. And then we can go forward again. You do the same thing with coaching is, oh, we learned something. It wasn't right. Like I had a client um, this past week who we went a little too fast for her in terms of the practices she was taking on. And when we, she came back, she's like, oh, I learned. I can't be where I want to be today. Mm. But what I learned was I can do this, right? I can pull it back a little bit. I can take a baby step forward. Um, and I don't have to be there today. And it, it's great because you get to adjust with your client as well as really learn with them. That's awesome. I love that approach. Um, I'm curious beyond just like coaching to help people grow, help people achieve. Do you have a, a bigger mission or a bigger purpose for the, your particular practice today? Yeah. So my, my bigger really mission is to help. I, well, I've, I would say I've kind of two. Great. <laughs> just, you know, just a couple just of not? big life changing missions, big life changing <laughs> missions. But the, the one is, is really allowing people to really say that this is who I am, stand in there, they're who they are, dropping the shoulds and really being able to move forward in their life and career from a place of empowerment mm. versus the shoulds. I've really been hearing a lot of shoulds lately, um, as well as how to be a leader in your life. You know, I think that a lot of people get into leadership roles and you're, you're kind of dropped there, right? Hey, here's a new title. Here's a team plop. Here you go. Um, here's a, you know, an executive title. And you're like, well, I haven't done that before right? What, what I have to make this all up because everybody around you is making it up. Right. Right, um, right. But there's that imposter syndrome and it's really helping people realize that a leadership is beyond just a title, but it's also about finding out who you are as a leader, right? And start practicing that and truly practice it to the point that when somebody reflects back to you, you never ask them what you are, what type of leader you are, but they actually reflect it back to you. Beautiful. I had that happen. I had that happen actually in my corporate career. Um, I asked my boss for some, some general feedback. Um, I do, we do an exercise in, in the kind of training that I did. Um, and it was about getting to your core, who you are as a core. And he reflected back. He's like, you're a servant leader, not just by name, but by action, which is not very often what you hear, right? Like a lot of times he, he said, a lot of times, a lot of people are like, I'm a servant leader. But then you look at what they're doing and they don't exhibit any of those behaviors. And so for me, it's really about how do you make sure you're exhibiting it and truly embodying the leadership you want to do. That's so powerful. Is there a particular type of person in a particular industry or any other characteristics that you love working with that really inspires you? 
Yeah. I would say the person who really inspires me are those people who are willing to say, I know I'm not where I want to be. And I'm willing to do anything to get there, right? I'm willing to rip off every band-aid and get super uncomfortable and still go forward and do it, right? They're the people who even in the middle of a session might be like, Ugh, I hate that you asked me this question, right? Um, but those are the people who are willing to look in the mirror. And I love working with the people who are willing to look in the mirror, even no matter how ugly they think the mirror is going to reflect back. It's such a powerful description because you bring about such bright, beautiful, sparkly results. But to get there, you really sometimes have to go to these uncomfortable, dark places. Yeah, especially as a leader, I feel like, you know, because as a leader, you, we often choose, feel like we have to stand really tall. We have to have our shoulders back and we have to really have this presence about us in the room that it says, I have, I know everything, right? It, 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 it's this instinctual thing because we've seen it over and over again, exhibited as a, this is what you're supposed to be as a leader. Um, but you really have to break it down because to be a leader, you have to start being vulnerable. You have to, as one of my managers used to say, she said, I specifically picked people out around me to fill in all of my weaknesses. Mm. So that even though I'm not, I don't like spreadsheets. I have the person who I go to for all my spreadsheet work, right? And, and it's being able to acknowledge that you're not gonna know everything and that's okay. And that is very uncomfortable for a lot of leaders. A lot of leaders are not comfortable with not knowing. And so, you have to get into the mud, you have to get into the dirt, you have to get to the dark side of, of who you are in order to bring forward more of the beauty. I love that, I love that. So as you continue to build out your practice, what does the, what does the future hold? Where are you hoping to take things yourself as a, as a leader, as a founder, as a coach? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking at taking things, I mean, I speak a lot, um, so I wanna expand my speaking repertoire beyond the, the, the groups that I've been talking to, which are, are typically smaller organizations, um, really want to start getting into conferences. But I also want to start getting in, reaching a broader group of people. Um, so right now I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, but really wanting to open up to, to group coaching and, and being able to service more people in a shorter amount of time, so to speak right? Because mm -hmm. one-on-one -on -one coaching is very intensive, but being able to have a group coaching where everybody gets to, to learn from each other and experience what somebody else's growth is, is super powerful. Um, so that's, that's really where I'm looking at going at next at this point in my, my business um, and dreams. And then I'm, I'm keeping myself open, right? Seeing where the wind takes me, um, for example, I'm, I'm actually going to work with some infertility groups this, this evening wow. because somebody, I went through infertility myself and um, a, a coach tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, they need somebody sure. to, to be a special guest on this for the support group. Will you do it? And I said, yeah, definitely. So I'm keeping myself open to seeing also where things take me. And I think that that's really actually powerful for a leader is to, to emulate that piece of things, to be able to say, I have a path forward. We have a path forward as a company, but we're willing to ebb and flow with it. And the key there is the ebbing and flowing, right? So a lot of companies, we have a path forward and we, we add, we add, we add, we add more goals to our list, but it's being able to intentionally say, you know what, this goal is no longer important. Yeah. Or it's yeah. not important for today. I think that's so beautiful. And I love how you're applying your you know, way of being and your skill set to such a diverse set of things. Because you, on one hand, can apply it to, you know, you're working with leaders in product management and technology to help them be more effective leaders, which I think is so important, so needed. Um, you help companies be more innovative. You help companies make smarter decisions. You help companies be more strategic. But at the same time, this similar skill set you're bringing to this like infertility group. And it's so fascinating to me how this coaching skill set and in particular your kind of scientific method 
flavor of it is yeah. so helpful in a variety of settings. I'd be curious just to understand, do you find that, you know, this work with this group of women and the work that you do within corporations, is there a lot of overlap there or is it just two completely different ways of oh, looking? Total overlap. Um, it's amazing. I actually worked with a woman who she hired me from a, the, her business perspective. She's an entrepreneur and she's like, I have certain goals and I really want help on it. And we ended up doing a lot of work on personal um, because something happened that, that shifted, needed us to shift what was going on. And at the end, she was like, oh my gosh, everything we worked on, even though we worked all on personal, I'm going to be able to apply to what I initially hired you for from a business perspective. Um, now, to be clear, we we intentionally shifted, right? right? So it wasn't like things happened, but I'm a firm believer that your personal and professional world commingle. And so as that commingling happens, you really coach towards that because if you solely focus in on career, you may actually, or leadership, you may actually miss out on being able to look at that bigger picture, which is really where transformation occurs, where you start to see the work you're doing sh really show up in your world. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like going to a, a doctor. If you go to a doctor for your knee, he's only going to look at your knee. But if you go to somebody who helps look at you whole from head to toe, heart, head, everything, they're going to look at you from all different angles and be able to see you in a different way. And so your knee pain might have absolutely nothing to do with your knee and it might actually have to do with your hip, but the knee doctor might not even notice it. I love it. So you're pretty much a holistic healer. <laughs> yes, yes, I holistic love coach. <laughs> holistic coach, beautiful. Well, look, Jamie, we talked about so many interesting things in your work and your career. I'm curious when you're not coaching when you're not doing these amazing things what do you like to do for fun oh oh so many things um gardening right now gardening i love it uh my husband and i we had to like slap our hands when we went to the garden store this this weekend because we we're like okay we can't buy everything we had we we didn't plan any of this right like we we're ebbing like, and flowing <laughs> ebbing and flowing picking out some plants here and I, ha I had two plants i definitely wanted i knew that but like it was one of those where we like we only have a small small plot and we didn't because we didn't plot it out it's like let's keep it like simple so that we can we can grow with it right we can say oh we like this or we don't like that and we can let it grow over time um so gardening is one thing um i have a son now so playing with him is just it's the best thing in the world um so spend a lot of my time doing that and then i also do photography um it's been a while since i picked up my camera because i like to do it when travel more than anything, but I love spending time with my camera and just looking at the world in a different, with a different view, right? It's, it's it helps change perspective. It helps you kind of see things in a different light because um, you can go in and then you can go out. It's, it's a lot of fun and you get to see things beautiful. Mm -hmm. I actually love You're photography. Looking... Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say, I love photography as well for that exact same reason. Yeah. It just gives you a sense of, of beauty and gives you a pause to look at the beauty. Mm. I love how um, you're so you have, you're so like, mathematical and logical, but you're also so creative and artistic and you bring all these things into your world, both professionally and personally. And it seems like you help your clients do the same. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Took me a long time to bring that creativity in. I will say that. But so it's all it's a here. journey. <laughs> it's all here now. So I love it. A lot of fun. Well, look, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your beautiful yeah. insights. This was so interesting and very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed our conversation today.